What is up guys, so the Arrowverse has brought us a bunch of adaptations of DC characters and some are better than their comic book counterparts which is a video I made a couple days ago and then there are some who are just as good as their comic book counterparts and then there are some who are just flat out worse which is what this video is. So for this video I won't be going over characters that I just straight up, straight up don't like on in the Arrowverse because some of the characters on this list I don't dislike, some of the characters I do actually hate but there are other characters that I don't dislike on on this on this list but they're just not as good as their comic book counterparts also I'll be I will be basing this list off of how how much I like the comic book counterparts so somebody like Felicity Smoke will not be on this list because I don't really like her comic book counterpart I mean I've never even heard of her until the character Felicity Smoke appeared on Arrow so that's basically what this list is about going over five characters who are are pretty badass in the in the in the comics but then just didn't translate well to the show, or just were much worse than they are in any of the shows, either Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, even Constantine, or maybe even Black Lightning, but there's nothing from those two last shows on this list. So with that in mind, let's go over the top five Arrowverse characters who are worse than their comic book counterparts. Number five is Black Canary, aka Dinah Laura Lance. So this is the character I was talking about earlier when I said that I, there's a character on this list that I like. I do like this character a lot, but her comic book counterpart is just so much better. There are a lot of things that this show on Arrow just didn't do right with a character. Like, first of all, they gave her a backstory, a shared backstory with Oliver Queen, which really did not work well because it just it just it just made no sense for the characters to get together in, later in the in the future. But also, they, I I much preferred the version that comes comes into that would have come into the show later in the season, like season three or something, because that by then she could have had her canary cry because the Flash aired and had that whole metahuman thing, so she could have came from Central City, which is what they did with Dinah Drake, but I'm not, she's not included on this list because that's a different character, that's Dinah Drake, well this is Dinah Laura Lance, but there's a lot of things that the comic book version is just does so much better, she's one, way more badass in the comics, she's supposed to be one of the best fighters in, in the DC Universe, behind like Batman, Ricardo Diaz, and Lady Shiva, and characters like that, but she is supposed to be so much better at fighting than she is on the show while Green Arrow is supposed to be worse at fighting than he is on the show, so I guess they switched those two, but still, that does mean that Black Canary is a lot less badass on the show, and her backstory just doesn't hold up to the one in the comics. I mean, the, the comic one doesn't have a great one, but the show, the the, the way she, she, she learned how to fight just didn't really make that much sense. I didn't mind it, but it didn't make much sense, and really the three things I don't like about the Arrow version is one, she has a shared uh, backstory with Oliver. Two, she doesn't have a canary cry, which could have been fixed really easily. And three, she was never in a relationship with Oliver Queen as a black canary, which is something the comic book version does, which is just so much better. But I guess they fixed uh, two out of those three things with the, the with Dinah Drake in season five and six. Number four is Red Tornado. So it's no secret the Arrowverse Red Tornado for a while was just straight up trash. The one that appeared on Supergirl was just the worst version of any comic book counterpart I've seen. Like one of the worst because he, first of all, he had no personality, which the Red Tornado in the comics definitely does. He's one of those robots with a heart, like like Wally from Wally, not Wally West. Wally from the movie Wally. Like a lot of there are a lot of movies that do that or TV shows that do that have this robot. With that wants to be human or something like that, and that's something that made Red Tornado such a great character. But in the show on Supergirl, they gave him no personality. He was just a robot, and he looked so stupid. The makeup for him was stupid. The CGI for his powers was crazy bad. So everything surrounding that character was just nothing. And it was nowhere near as good as the comic book version. Now they did fix a couple things with the far more superior uh, Earth X version of Red Tornado, which just looked cooler because he was fully CGI, and the CGI for his for his, uh, for his powers looked great, but he still didn't have any personality, he was just a robot, that's it, he was just a remote control robot that the Freedom Fighters used and he had no personality, which is something the comic book version, like I said, definitely has at least somewhat and it just makes him a far better character. Also, we only saw Red Tornado for one episode, so maybe he did have a personality, maybe he was just being controlled in that one instance, so it would have been cool to see more of him, but just from what we've seen of the two versions of Red Tornado who each appeared in one singular episode, they just don't hold a candle to the comic book version who is just so much better. Number three is Ra's al Ghul. So first of all, Ra's al Ghul should never have been a main villain on Arrow just because he's he's a Batman villain through and through and he just never should have been a main villain on an, a Green Arrow show, especially when Green Arrow kills him 
in the end, and that's the thing. He was killed by Green Arrow, which makes him severely less badass than he is in the comics, because he's supposed to be on par with Batman, because he, he actually trained Batman, or at least partially trained Batman. We know in the in the movie, Batman Begins, he fully trained Batman. That was his, pretty sure his main trainer, the one that forge him into Batman, so the fact that Rachel Gould in the show is taken out by Green Arrow, who is definitely not as good as a fighter as Batman, and, and even though he's a much better fighter in the Arrowverse than he is in the comics, in Green Arrow, he's still nowhere near as good as Batman, so the fact that he took out Rachel Gould in a fight, just it just undermines the character of Rachel Gould so much, and also, he got zero character development, nothing past the fact that he owned the League of Assassins, and he wanted to kill Damian Dark, that was really it, That was, and he wanted Oliver Queen to take over his throne, that was it. He had he got zero character development. No other main villain in the Arrowverse, or at least the Earth-1 Arrowverse, got that little character development. I say Earth-1 because Rhea and Astra did get that little character development, but the Earth-1 villains, the main villains of Earth-1, Rhea Shell Ghoul is definitely the one that got the least development out of all the characters, which just makes him a bad character because I don't really care about him. The fact that... He is one of Batman's greatest villains, and he was on the show. He just wasn't nearly as good as that. Makes it pretty obviously, pretty obvious that he's far inferior to his comic book counterpart. And any other com any other counterpart he's had, like the Batman Begins version, the Gotham version, even Gotham did him, did him did Ra's al Ghul so much better, which makes sense because he's a Batman villain, and Gotham is a semi Batman show. Batman has appeared on that show, kind of. So the fact that a couple of reasons this out the arrow version sucks. One, he's just nowhere near as badass as the comic book version. Two, he's supposed to be a Batman villain. The fact that he was on Arrow just was stupid. And the biggest one is that he got absolutely no character development. Number two is Vandal Savage. So again, this is another main villain on this list, and I honestly hated this guy. More so than Rachel Ghoul. He's probably or almost definitely my least favorite Earth One Arrowverse main villain. He was just terrible. His connection to Hawkman and Hawkgirl did not serve to better the show in the slightest. Like, I hated that. I hated that their connection, the connection between their two backstories was a thing. Because first of all, Vandal Savage is supposed to be a caveman. Not He's not supposed to be from Egypt. And second of all, the way they handled that connection of backstory was so bad. Like, it was so so clumsy. It's so, so lazy, the way they handled it. And it just didn't work at all. N not to mention, this version of Vandal Savage was just so irritating to watch. It might be because of his accent, because like he he shouldn't have had that accent. It doesn't make any sense, and it's kind of an it's kind of an annoying accent. Like if it it was a different character who should have that accent, it probably wouldn't bother me at all. But the accent on just doesn't work on a character who's supposed to be this menacing and this this big main villain. It really doesn't work for a character like Vandal Savage, not to mention that Vandal Savage has never had that accent before. He's always sound, sounded American, kind of, which doesn't really make sense, but it, it just sounds better. It sounds more menacing than the accent he had here on the show, which really hindered his character, and his whole storyline was just terrible. The Really, the only thing good about it was the Rip Hunter thing that came out of it. Like, that wasn't bad, but the character himself of Vandal Savage was just terrible. Just like Ra's al Ghul, he got absolutely or almost no character development. Like, Everything, all he wanted to do the entire season was hunt down Hawkgirl and Hawkman, and that was it. That's really all the character development he had, past the fact that he had a daughter, and that was basically it. So, this character just sucks. Also, he's really not that great of a fighter. He's, uh, Van he's Vandal Savage. He's, like, supposed to be a couple thousand years old instead of, like, he he on the show, he was, like, a thousand years old, two thousand years old, but uh, in the comics, he's supposed to be, like, ten thousand years old. So he's had enough time to hone his skills as a fighter, which means he's supposed to be a pretty great fighter. But on the show, Heat Wave beat him in a fight. Heat Wave, along with help from, I don't really, really remember who, but Heat Wave was the main fighter there. And he beat Vandal Savage in a like one-on-one -on -one basically fight, which is ridiculous. So this version of Vandal Savage is one of the worst versions of Vandal Savage I have ever seen, especially when... In the Justice League TV show, Vandal Savage was one of the best villains. He was awesome. He was super menacing, and the storylines he were included in, like, like when they went back to World War II, and it turns out that Vandal Savage took over the world, and then the episode where Superman presumably dies and he gets into the future, Vandal Savage was an amazing villain on that show. To see him just so terribly portrayed in this show on Legend of Tomorrow sucked, so this character is definitely way way worse than his comic book counterpart as well as any other character uh, any other counterpart 
he's ever had, similar to Ra's al Ghul and also Red Tornado. And number one is Hawkman and Hawkgirl. So this is technically a tie, but not really because other than like in the Justice League TV show, these characters have always been connected and everything. And even then, they had a whole episode dedicated to Hawkman and Hawkgirl. So those characters are definitely very connected. So I think uh, it's fitting to put them both at number one. But these two characters are just terrible. They're one of the worst things to ever happen to the Arrowverse. And I'm glad they they were gone after one season of them, of them appearing in the Arrowverse because they sucked, especially Hawkgirl. So these two characters, first of all, were terribly casted because if they were going for an Egyptian thing, then they should have hired people who looked Egyptian. But what they could have done is just have every reincarnation of them look different, which makes sense because it makes no sense to me how every reincarnation of these guys looks the same because genetically, because it's just like a random pick, right? It's just a random pick throughout the, the generations for people that look that just have the same mind as Hawkman and Hawkgirl or just like memories or they're destined to be together or something like that because the fact that they look the same it really rubs me the wrong way which it works in the in like an animated form but in live action it just doesn't make any sense to me because it's supposed to be more realistic but this is reincarnation we're talking about but the another thing is just even without them looking like they're supposed to they were just, just so terribly casted. Both these actors and, I guess, actor and actress were terrible in the role, and it does not help that they were terribly written as well. First of all, Hawkman was gone after, like, three episodes. He had a, he appeared in total, like, four or five episodes. I don't really remember how many, but the episodes he was in, he was the most bland character ever. Like, the episode where, where he appeared in the crossover, where he fought Green Arrow in the Flash, that was a cool scene. Everything after that, whenever we saw him, he, he, he sucked. But the real problem here is Hawkgirl. Hawkgirl was one of the most annoying characters in the Arrowverse ever. Like, every episode or two, she mentioned how she used to be a barista, and that became a meme. It was so annoying, it became a meme. These two characters are terrible. Their costumes look stupid, their, their, their maces are so tiny, they look stupid, and their fight scenes were terrible, their characters were terrible, everything about them was terrible, and that sucks because their comic book counterparts are kind of awesome. I grew up with Hawkgirl, being in the Justice League, so because of the cartoon, so I definitely liked her as as a character, and then she became the most annoying character, one of the most annoying characters in the Arrowverse, and even in the comics, she's pretty awesome, and so is Hawkman. They're both pretty badass in the comics, and even though they don't have, they do have pretty complicated backstory. I always I always like their backstory with the the Themyscarian version, and then I didn't really like the Egyptian version, but the Themyscarian version is pretty cool, so I always liked these characters. And when they when it was announced that they were gonna appear in the Arrowverse, I got kind of excited, but then I was extremely let down by these terribly written, terribly portrayed, and terribly casted versions of Hawkman and Hawkgirl. So that's my list for the top five Arrowverse characters who are worse than their comic book counterparts. Let me know what your list is in the comments down below and don't forget to like share and subscribe and follow me on twitter for better daily updates on my videos as well as daily polls on the arrowverse and it's mostly on the arrowverse but sometimes it's other superhero movies or tv shows but usually it's the arrowverse so definitely follow me on twitter link is in the description and but if you don't have twitter and you still want to have better daily updates on my videos definitely click the notification icon because that definitely helps and thanks for watching